All right. Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome. Uh, my name is Chris Downey. On behalf of uh, Brivia Consulting, I'd like to welcome you to our first webinar of 2022. And I say good morning, but I also should say good afternoon and good evening, depending on where you're joining us uh, from the world. Uh, we are here today to talk about the ultimate leadership responsibility, and I will introduce Steve, our speaker, in just a moment. But before we do, I wanted to share with you uh, our plan for webinars in, in 2022. See, last year we started uh, these webinars as a way to connect with our network. And we through, and it went a lot better than we had expected. We did eight webinars last year and we had over, uh, over 3,000 people register for our webinars and we had great interaction with, with many of you. So thank you, first of all, for that. Uh, but we had a chance to connect with, with many of our consistent uh, participants to find out what, what would uh, good look like as we moved forward. So what I want to just tell you about is a little bit about how we're going to approach webinars going forward this year. And we're going to, we're going to do, we're going to break it up. We're going to offer you a webinar once a month, and it's going to be broken down like this. Once a quarter, Steve's going to provide a thought leadership webinar. And today is our first of that uh, with the ultimate leadership responsibility. So once a quarter, we'll be providing a thought leadership webinar. And then once a quarter, following that, a month later, we're going to do a solution spotlight, which is going to provide an opportunity for us to share with you how you can take action on many of the things that Steve talks about in his thought leadership webinars. And then following that, we're going to do, uh, we're going to have special guests join us for webinar once a quarter as well. Uh, they could be partners of Brivia, customers, people that are really making a difference in the world and sharing their experience. So that's going to be our approach this year. There's going to be 12 webinars broken out like that, one of each of these types per quarter. At the end of this, this uh, webinar, I'll talk to you about the next couple that are coming up, uh, but we are excited to, to be, uh, be hosting these for you. Um, so welcome to the Ultimate Leadership Responsibility. As with all of our webinars, we are, we are hoping this is gonna be as interactive as possible. possible. We, we encourage you to utilize the chat function, use the Q&A. Uh, for those of you that have seen Steve speak before, you know he loves your interaction. So ask your questions. In fact, you could start with the chat now by letting us know where you're joining from and be sure to respond to everyone. It would be great to, uh, to keep that chat going. Also know that we're recording uh, this session. So we'll make it available to you as soon as we can. And you can share that with anyone uh, that you feel might uh, benefit from it as well. So get those those uh, questions in throughout the session. Uh, we'll do our best to respond to as many of them as, as possible. Uh, but for now, let me introduce you to our, our to our special guest, uh, Steve DeGroote. Steve has devoted his life to helping others in everything that he that he he does. He's, he's a past professor of human behavior uh, theory. He's uh, was a therapist. He's now our president and CEO or president of. Uh, uh, Brivia Consulting, and just an overall, uh, you know, human behavior enthusiast, as he calls himself, and just a, a great friend of mine. So I'll hand it over to Steve, and I'll reconnect with you at the end of the session. Thank you, Steve. Awesome. Thanks. Thanks, Chris. I was just busy in the chat, uh, seeing lots of people from all the way from the U.S. and Winnipeg. Uh, welcome, everyone, uh, to the greatest, the ultimate leader responsibility. And I'm Steve Jager. Thank you, Chris, so much. Um, so welcome, welcome, welcome. Use the chat. I'm so excited to be here like usual. Um, what we're going to do today is we're going to talk about, I want to start with a reflection, of course, to get to connect you with your experience. And as much as we call it thought leadership, I love practice leadership, practical, practical, practical. We're going to go from like hundreds of leader responsibilities. We're going to talk about um, what are the most important, what what you're doing, how that plays into performance and engagement and all those kinds of things. And then we're going to dial it down to five of the key responsibilities. Then we're going to bring it right to two. And then we want to reveal um, the what we think the ultimate responsibility of leaders uh, are or is for our people. So welcome. That's what we're going to get to. And, and st stick around because my favorite thing is interacting. So put your questions in the chat. Uh, we've got uh, Chris and Steve here from Brivia to help out to get the questions. And I want to hear from you. And I want to be able to interact towards the end and answer as many questions as possible. We're here for 45 minutes. So we're going to go till uh, 15 minutes, uh, 1245. So let's get started. Let's Let's rock and roll. I want to welcome you. I want to thank you. Thank you for your commitment. Thank you for your caring. Thank you for being here. Your commitment not only to your people, but to learning and getting to better for yourself and for the people that you're responsible for. 
I want to start with a reflection, okay? You know, I want to bring it to your experience. I want you to reflect. So I'm going to ask you to share. I don't want you to share your reflections yet, but I want you to just jot down your answers either in your head or on a piece of paper on a cocktail napkin. The first reflection is what do you need from the people you lead? Okay, I want to ask you that question just to think about that, right? Hold on to that thought, right? What do you need? Most people say, Steve, I just need them to get the work done. That's why we're here, right? But do you need them to trust you? Do you need them to show up fully? Do you need them to get along with each other? Do you need them to think inside the box, outside the box, right? What do you need from the people that you're responsible for? Now, if we've got some aspiring leaders that are here, that's super awesome because we're speaking to you too and your people are going to be fortunate to have you as a leader. The second reflection is, what do you hope to accomplish with the people that you lead? What do you hope to accomplish with them? Do you want to exceed targets? Do you want to strengthen the team? Do you want to exceed everyone's expectations? What do you hope to accomplish with the people that you lead that are on your team or for those that you're going to lead? So I want you to think about that for a moment and just, just connect with that. Because what we're talking about is we're going to talk about intentions and actions and impact, right? So we've got to start with our intentions. So let's go to the final reflection. What do you want for them? What do you want for the people that you lead? Now that some people say that's a weird question, Steve. What do you want? Do you want them to grow under your leadership? Do you want them to be happy? Do you want them to look forward to coming to work? This, some of the answers may cross over here with some of your other answers. Like, you know, what, what do you really want for them? Do you want them to trust you? Do you want them to tell you when something's wrong, right? So if you like, I know I said I didn't want to share, but I'd love to, I'd love to see if you want to share reflection number three. What, what do you want for your people? Now, you don't have to because it can be very personal. Right, but what what do you hope for your people? What do you want for them? That that does anybody feel like throwing in the chat? You want growth? Thank you so much. Passion? You want them to find meaning? Oh, we love that at Brivia, right? For them to grow and love what they do? Oh, that's amazing, right? You want them to love their job and you want them to have an impact? Oh man, look at the chat. This is beautiful. Hey, Tanya, so good to see your name there. Job satisfaction, excitement, right? So I think what everybody is wanting for their people is is success. Uh, passion, motivation, growth, right? I see that to know that they count. Wow. How awesome is that? Connie, to grow and share accomplishments. Okay, this is great. This is really good. Because see, what's so important about your intentions? We talk a lot about purpose. We talk a lot about uh, passion, right? It's what you want, right? To feel valued, to have ownership, right? To have an impact. And what's cool about purpose is often it's tied to our passion and it's also wrapped wrapped and held in your intentions and it's what you want for your people for the people that you lead i love seeing the chat i mean it's making my heart grow three sizes right there's such a diversity though even though there's so many consistent and common things in the in the chat right in terms of what you want for your people there's also a lot of diversity diverse in terms of intentions diverse definitions uh, most importantly all of us what do we think is our leaders most responsible for right there's so much debate there is so much debate. This is what, I mean, to me, this is wild, right? What are leaders responsible for? Right? There's thousands. I, I mean, it's wild to me. Did you know that there are more than 50,000 books on leadership and leadership development? I mean, that's probably an underestimate. Somewhere on, on, the, on the internet, it says there's a billion. I'm not sure about that. There's more than 20,000, or no, sorry, 20 million written works on leadership and leadership development, right? I can't even imagine how many ideas are in there. When you Google leadership, now don't do it now. I mean, if you're a multitasker and you Google leadership and you actually Google, put it beside employee or engagement, you will actually get more than 500 million hits, right? 500 million. According to Peter Northhouse, who I really love his work on leadership, says that there's just as many definitions of leadership as there are people trying to define it. What's the right definition? But more importantly, what, what is the right responsibility. What's the most important responsibility? I love that people are using the chat. There's so many great things in the chat. If you had to choose out of the hundreds, right, or the billions, millions, what would you say, and we've already got people saying what's, what, their, what their role is or what they're responsible for. Well, if you could choose one or two, I want to see it in the chat. What would you say if you could boil it down to one responsibility or one role, what would you say would be the most important role and responsibility of a leader today, right? Out of those billions of ideas and concepts. What would you say? Let me see it in the chat. As coach, growth, communicator, well-being. Oh, I love it. Supporting, transformation, 
growing and leading success, established enabler coaching. We're seeing some common things in there, right? So, so what's really cool is that even though there's billions of ideas on leadership, we start to kind of bring it down. And that's what we want to do today is we want to talk about the ultimate responsibility that, you know, this might sound a little bit over the, over the top, but we really believe that this one responsibility is so important that everything that's in the chat actually becomes moot if this one responsibility isn't met. But what I want to say is everything in the chat right now, empowering, providing safety, coaching, transparency, they're all important. Every single one of them is important. So one of the things I want to do is we're going to bring it down, right? I said we're going to bring it from millions to thousands to hundreds, and I think we've already got more than 100 in the chat already. So what's really cool is let's, let's bring it down. Let's simplify leadership. I think in, I said we're going to do that. Simplify leadership. So in 2000, between 2013 and 2014, 15, I traveled the world, eight countries, asking people about what's a great leader? What are the roles and responsibilities of great leadership? And we simplified it. And actually, our work is really cool. It's, comp it's been confirmed by about 20,000 people since then. And they agree on these are the main roles and responsibilities. I think you're going to see some of your reflections in there. So simplifying great leadership, of course, performance, right? What are we there to do? Success, right? Success of the team. Performance is really about developing individual team capacity for the performance of the, the team and the company, right? For the organization overall. But what's really interesting is while performance is, is important, it wasn't out of the five domains that were identified, it wasn't the most important. So let's go backwards. Support. Support was identified as the second, or well, is one of the top five things that leaders need to do to support, develop their team to be successful, to grow. Some of the things that are in the chat already. I don't know if you'll be surprised that the top three that came up, right? This was from over 10,000 people. Integrity for leaders to just have integrity, to do the right thing, right? To do what they say they're going to do and be consistent with that. To be empathic, right? For the, for the leader to be empathic, to show empathy, to connect with their team in a way that builds strong relationships, right? Takes their, takes their perspective into consideration. I wonder if you can guess, can you guess what the number one thing is? People said great leaders are always respectful. That they demonstrate respect, they lead with respect, they show respect, they, they um, endure right through, um, through the challenging times by showing respect, right? So, so these are some of the things that we came up with, but I said we're going to bring it down right to one. So respect, empathy, integrity, support, and performance. How do those five domains, when you look at your reflections, how do those five domains line up to what you said is important, right? Are there some similarities? So let's, let's simplify it even more, okay? <laughs> My academic brain, I call myself a recovering academic. Let's, let's bring it right down. We're going to simplify it. Can we simplify it even more beyond these five, these five domains that we've talked about, right? And what, I, what, I'm, what I'm liking in, in the chat is seeing that most people here, I think everybody to some degree, your answers overlap these five domains, which, I mean, that's encouraging for us because as we continue to verify what people say great leadership is, we can start putting those things into action. So let's go a little bit further. Let's simplify it even more. Let's, okay, wait a minute. <laughs> I wanted to put this up to get this right. Now, now this might seem like an incongruence because I just said, I'm going to simplify it. But my academic part of me said, you know, let's pull something out of, the, out of one of our trainings, right? The leader's main role is to support and develop the capacity of employees to be successful in the pursuit and accomplishment of shared goals, comma, deep breath, in a manner <laughs> that operationalizes and advances the vision, the mission, the values, and the strategy of the organization. Now, bear with me for a second. I did say I was going to simplify this, okay? So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to simplify it. How do we simplify this even further? We're going to simplify and boil it down because one of the hardest things about leaders and leadership nowadays is to balance the needs of the organization, the needs and the goals of the organization with the needs and the goals of the people that we're responsible for, right? That is one of the most difficult things to do in order to accom accommodate this definition. So let's boil it right down to two serious roles and responsibilities that we believe people, leaders, people leaders, leaders of people need to do. Here we go. The first one, I don't think this is going to surprise anybody. Connection. Connection. We saw it in the chat. Relationship, being valued. Connection is about relationships. 
It's about caring. It's about empathy. It's about a connection to each other. But more importantly, beyond that, it's a connection in terms of a sense of belonging, but a connection to the things that are important, like values, purpose, passion, right? Are we feeling connected? Do we have connectedness? In the simplest form, connection is about feeling safe. It's about being and feeling valued. It's about trust, okay? So what's really cool, that, so that's one, there's two. Okay, there's one more. We're, we're going to boil it right down to the ultimate responsibility right away. More than ever, though, this probably isn't a surprise because you can't throw a, a Hershey's kiss or a hug or a Kleenex box without hitting somebody who's either talking about or writing about caring, right? It's critical. I mean, you've got to be asleep for like the last 10 years. Like, it is so critical. But this is so important, right? However, while caring and connection is critical, and this is one of the things that really, really pushed this webinar, is that many of the most caring leaders are not having the intended impact that they desire. In many cases, and this, this was, goes for me, and I know some of the leaders we work with, I, was, I thought I was the most caring, but I was having the opposite effect. Many caring leaders have the opposite effect that they intend. We believe, right, just a perspective, that the caring leader, the Achilles heel, is that we believe that caring is going to get us through, that caring and empathy is going to be the thing that, and it is, it is. Caring is essential, but it's not sufficient. So while caring helps a lot, no doubt about it, it doesn't help guide, provide the guidance needed to get the job done, to get it done well. That requires the second essential responsibility of leaders. Here we go. Clarity. Clarity, that's it. Connection balanced with clarity. Well, what's clarity? It's about what we're doing, where we're going, how we're going to get there, right? Who's going to get there? It's about the vision, the mission, the strategy. Some people call it the hard stuff, right? I don't think we need this differentiation anymore. Hard skills, soft skills. I mean, really, no more divisiveness, right? It's about the directives, the targets, right? The goals. Most importantly, though, it's about roles and responsibilities that I'm clear about why I'm here and what I'm doing. I'm clear on my targets and expectations. Clarity, in the simplest term, is about the things necessary to understand and do our jobs well. So, connection and clarity, right? As leaders, think about your answers and your reflections. Think about the things that are in the chat. If we can focus on connection and clarity simultaneously, we're going to do well. Right? So we believe at Brivia that these are the two, and we're going to get down to one. There's one more, one more ultimate responsibility, which is why we're all here. So the interesting thing is some of us are really good at connection. <laughs> some of us are like, we just nail connection, and our clarity needs a little bit of work, right? Some of us are really good at clarity. We are good at defining objectives and targets and roles and responsibilities and giving feedback, but we just need to pick up our game in the connection area. And that's okay. That's totally okay, right? The reality from our work, this is so important, the reality from our work, and this is consistent, is that usually when someone is struggling with their performance at work, in one way or another at work, on the job, it's due to a lack of one or both of these, right? And that's good news. So if you're, if you're, if you're, if you're here and you're, you're starting to feel a little bit overwhelmed, right, we're not questioning anybody's caring at all, right? That's why you're here. But the interesting thing, and this is where the hope comes in, because the solution is so simple. The solution is so simple. So we've gone from 5 million, or sorry, 500 million options, down to a couple of hundred, down to five, five domains, right, of performance, supportiveness, respect, integrity, and empathy, right down to these two, two roles of a leader, trying to simplify this to the extent possible, of connection and clarity. And I want to hear your questions about this. I want to have a discussion about this. As a matter of fact, I think we might have a clubhouse room on just this if you want to participate, right? So let's take this a little bit further. Knowing the impact, okay? So we're going for impact. Everybody in the chat so far in your reflections wants something good for your people. You want them to perform, you want them to grow, you want them to be inspired, you want them to be excited. Well, we believe, and this is from our perspective, that there is one ultimate responsibility of leaders. If we're to boil it down to one, it's got nothing to do with whether any of the ones we've offered already is wrong or right. It's about 
all of the other things that we've talked about hinges on this one responsibility. And here it comes. It is knowing the impact we're having on the people that we're responsible for. For certain. See, this is important because we started with intentions and passions. I talk about the perils of passion and purpose. They're great. They're a great starting point. But if we don't know how our people are doing, the greatest intentions in the world don't amount to much if we're not delivering on what we want for the people we're responsible for. More importantly, what we want for our people, what we need, what they need to feel and do better in their work. So here's some questions that we really got to ask ourselves. Are your people feeling connected? Are your people clear? Do they have the clarity that they need to get the job done, to get it done well? Are they having the experience you want for them? Go back to your reflections, right? They're right there. But more importantly, are, are you, right? Or are they, more importantly, having the experience that they need to feel and do their absolute best at work? And here comes the final question. How do you know? See, one of the hardest things about leadership, my favorite quotes by Edward L. Flom, right? My favorite, one of my favorites. I mean, there's lots. I, if you know me, I got lots of favorites. One of the hardest things about leadership is, is understanding that you are not what you think you are, but what you are as perceived by other people, right? There is a gap. We actually talk about it all the time. Right? We talk about this intentions. We start with our intentions. They're great. They're amazing. There is, there, nobody gets up in the, no leader gets up in the, at the beginning of the day to make anybody's life difficult. Right? But what's important is we got to understand, and I, this is where my research has been for like 15, 20 years, is that there is a gap that exists for even the greatest leaders. How do we know, right? The, we know this because there's a tool that we've developed. Chris is going to talk a little bit about it. It's beautiful. But what we do know from this tool is that there's never, and I mean 100% of the time, and I don't use that word very often, when a self-assessment is measured against an experience of an employee, they've never been the same. Sometimes they've always been different. Sometimes the gap, the intent impact gap, is small, right, really small, and, and that's great. Sometimes it's chasmic. Sometimes it's massive and mostly almost always out of the awareness of the leader. So the truth is, right, and this is okay because there's great news. The truth is very few leaders do know. And what we've got to do, and this is my call for 2022, is we've got to close the intent impact gap. We've got to close that gap that exists between our intentions for the people that we're responsible for and the impact we're having on their experience as a leader. And here comes the good news. And it's coming, and I want your questions. I also want you to challenge it. I want you to say, no, that's not true, Steve. That's not my experience. Right? It seems easy, doesn't it? Here comes the number one strategy. You ready for it? <laughs> the number one strategy, we must ask them. We have to. We have to. Now, this seems, it seems easy, doesn't it? It seems too easy. Just ask them. Some would say, Steve, this makes sense. It's logical. It's logical. But here's a note about logic, right? When logic seems flawed, it's probably not logic. It's probably not a logical issue. You know what it is? It's an emotional issue. And I'm going to be honest about this. The first time I was expected to do an assessment of my leadership, I was scared to death. Most leaders don't ask because we're afraid of finding out that we're not doing it. We're afraid of finding out that our intentions for growth and beauty and impact and success and performance, that we're going to fall short. And that's tough to hear. I used to think that leaders didn't care. I used to be angry early in my career. I'm like, why? They don't care. They're not asking. They're not asking. Why aren't they asking? Then I became that leader that didn't ask. And I started to talk to other people. And I realized that we were scared. It wasn't a time management issue, it was an emotional regulation issue. And another reality, our employees' stories, and this is, this is what I learned, right? Because my intentions are much like yours. I want the best for my team. I want the best for the people we work with. But the reality is their story is going on with or without us. That's, that's the reality, with or without us. We could either be a part of it or not be a part of it, right? 
the only way we can support those intentions that we want and have the impact that we want is to join them on that journey, to learn about that journey and to learn about their story. So what you need to know won't come from a book, although there's lots of great helpful books out there. There's lots of great seminars. <laughs> I'm partial to Brivia. <laughs> we must seek it from the true expert, the, the one person who can speak to their experience of our leadership. And this is one thing we need to pay attention to. I like to just ex make exclamation marks. One thing that we must really pay attention to if, if there's these skepticism and pessimism and cynics talking in our heads is that this is one of the things that makes me go, hmm, right? Keeps me up at night. We have more knowledge than any other time in history. Through books and written articles and research, our no as our knowledge increases, engagement goes down and the well-being of employees goes down. It decreases and I have to go, what are we missing? And I think what we're missing is asking the real experts. Your people are the only experts on this planet that can tell us the experience of the leadership. So we must ask, right? We must be sure, but we also must be sure that we let them know why we're asking. Because this is what I remember. I remember when I started asking people, I had a couple people like looking for the trap door and going, uh, one guy said, am I getting fired? It was weird for them. It was weird to focus on strengths. It was weird to have to talk, to, to say, how's the trust in our relationship? So we must let them know. So a couple of tips I have is, Two messages, and you've heard me say these before. Let them know that you value them. I value you and I want your success. That's the first thing. I value you and I want your success and I want to be a better leader, right? Now, that's, it's one thing to say it, but I've got to try. We have got to try to align our actions with those messages. And once they believe us, we must ask, right? We must ask, ask for the feedback from everyone. Now, this is important, not just from your favorites, okay? <laughs> Not just from the people that are gonna tell you the things that you wanna hear. And here's another thing that we're learning in our work is that often the people that we're struggling with, the people that we're struggling with in terms of performance are the ones that have the most important feedback for us. Right? Does it sting? Oh yeah, it stings. But I often tell people that the, it's the feedback that stings that we've gotta pay the most attention to. And once again, another tough pill to swallow for us as leaders, but see if we go back to our reflections, See, what I had to come and reconcile, and I, the people that I coach and the people that we coach at Rivia, we have those honest conversations and we look at that intention and we say, hey, you know, you want this for your people. I know there's no doubt in my mind that everybody here cares a lot and they want that. How do we know? We've got to find out. Also, if you are asking, <laughs> don't take the, the quote, there's nothing for you to improve upon as adequate because it's not true. It's not true. Right? Great leaders, are, we're, in the, we're in the constant pursuit of better. There's got to be something we can work on, right? Unless someone on the line is perfect, right? I thought none of us are, but I, don't, I might be wrong. And if you are perfect, please reach out because I'd love to meet you. I'd love to hang out with you. I'd also like to take what you're taking. <laughs> All right. Listen. So we've got to ask. Sometimes we drop the ball, though, because we've got to ask. And then we've got to listen. Sometimes we don't listen. Right? Sometimes we do that first part and then we, we forget the second part or we, we don't listen. We're not present. If we get that far, if we listen, if we listen and we hear something, we've got to take what they're saying seriously. Right? Take what they say seriously. It doesn't mean we've got to take it in and it's all true, but we've got to take what they're saying seriously and we've got to look for their truth in it. What can we improve upon? Right? If we get there, let's act on it. Let's act on what we heard right? and then check in with them. A lot of people are saying three of the words that scare the, the heck out of me, which is, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter when I hear that. It's like, just ask, it doesn't matter. Why don't you just tell your leader, it doesn't matter, Stephen. The reason why that worries me is because those three words signify a progression to a lack of belief that something's better. So we've got to ask. Here's another tip before we get going. I'm going to bring it back and then I'm going to open it up to questions and pass it back to Chris. But here's some tips if you're, to get over the anxiety of asking, right? A couple of things. We've got a great course called Core Communication, which was built just for this, right? Just for this. So please reach out. But here's a tip that you can do as soon as you're off the call. Ask people for two things that you're doing really well, right? And when they're super excited and they're telling you that you're super awesome, then you can say, please tell me 
one thing I can do, even if it's just a little bit, just slightly differently. And sometimes that's enough to just get that going, right? So go back to your reflections. I want you to go right back to your reflections from the beginning. What you need from your people, what you hope to accomplish, and what you want for them, right? The interesting thing that we're hearing from employees is that they want the same things their leaders want. This is what drives me bonkers, right? We gotta, we gotta close that gap. They want the same thing. And there's three things, two things, connection and, 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 and connection and clarity, and they lead to one thing. The outcome is protection. That's what it is. It's protection. It's connection and clarity, which we call connection, direction, and protection. And you're protecting the company and you're protecting your people simultaneously. But we cannot accomplish our intentions and what we want for our people and what they need from us unless we know for certain the impact that we are having on them. And this is what we believe to be the ultimate leader responsibility if we were to choose one. So for 2022, let's work together to zap the gap, right? To zap the gap, the gap that exists between intent and impact. And I am more excited than ever. I think we can do this. So, you know we love to help. So don't hesitate to reach out because we love helping at Brivia and we're actually getting really good at it. So I'm gonna pass it back to Chris. Chris, over to you for questions and comments. Thanks everybody for being here. Yeah, Steve, don't run away. There's definitely lots of questions here. Uh, and one right out of the gate, I think right when you're sharing that uh, piece about clarity, what if I don't have clarity myself? Right. Right, that's a common question. So if we don't have clarity ourselves, then we gotta dial it back. That doesn't that doesn't abdicate us or get us off the hook from providing clarity for the people we're responsible for. So that's that's really important. We still have that obligation, right? The onus is on us. Now, we always say to the extent possible, right? So one of the things is if you don't have clarity, it's important to ask for it, right? In a gentle and respectful way. Now, if you're responsible for people and you don't have the clarity, there are things that we can get them focused on, right? Whatever department or function they're in, there are certain things. If you're in client experience, you know, you, there's things that you can focus on. If you're in the dialysis or the nephrology in health, right? There's certain tasks that you can keep focused on. And sometimes in, in moments of uncertainty, one of the best things we can do as leaders is get people focused on the immediate tasks that they need to do as a starting point. Great question. You know, as Steve, building on that, this was a comment that was made, but I think it's applicable, especially to our, or it is directly applicable to our friends in health. So I'll read it to you. And maybe there's some advice that you can add. I think it builds on what you said. It's a, a comment that was made. Clarity in healthcare right now is very difficult with people reassigned to roles that aren't normally theirs and are not part of passions. It's become very apparent how important clarity is to, to, to this person. And however, the struggle is real. So just maybe some yeah, advice. Yeah, absolutely. Some thank you. Thank you, Chris. And thanks for the question. Everybody that's here in health, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, just as a starting point, we know it's it's never been tougher. I know we're from Manitoba um, and it's tough all over the world. So thank you for all your efforts. This is common with transformation and redeployment, especially during the pandemic. And this is not uncommon for other places like tech and, and other organizations in the world. And What's so important is that when we have somebody on our team, especially in health, because that's the question that was asked, is get them to reconnect with what they came here for. Okay, not as a, just as a tactic or propaganda, but sometimes we become dislocated that we came here to help. We came here to make a difference, right? And we have to really ask ourselves, can we, what can we do in the moment to reconnect to that passion and that purpose to get us through to that next piece, right? And I, you know, sometimes we're not in the right place at the right time. So let's not, let's not like kid ourselves, right? If, if we can figure that out, we should move to a place that's more meaningful. But one of the things we're encouraging in health, especially, but you can do this in any sector that you're in is reconnect your people back to the things that brought them there. Why are they there? What can they connect to? What are the things that they can connect to that matter most to just reignite that spark, get them focused and get onto the, what, get onto what's next. Excellent. Thank Thanks. you. Thanks, Steve. Uh, here's a great one. Um, I think I know the answer to it, but I would be curious to hear what you say. Uh, what part does leadership humility, humility play in this? So much, so much, right? Humility, um, humility, you know, when we talk about at Brivia, we talk about the three great states, right? That people do really well when they feel safe, significant, situated. We also hear that about the importance of psych, uh, psychological safety. When you think about humility, humility is a containment for peace, 
for tranquility, for safety, for trust, right? So we can't, we cannot understate how important humility as is as a factor, right? And when you think about all the things that people have mentioned today, it's respect, it's empathy, it's humility, it's being humble, right? Those things all contribute to that connection that we we're talking about, to that safe place, right? So humility is absolutely critical to the extent possible, right? I had to work on that as a leader. I, I mean, I, I've still got a ways to go, right? So thank you for that question. I hope that was helpful. Excellent, Steve. A um, couple of more here. Here's here's one uh, that that's come up a couple. Cu there's, there's a couple of. Let me read both uh, both off to you here. One is that what is the role of knowing your limitations? Is it in, it's impossible to be everything to everyone all of the time? Are you perfect? Is there a role for leaders to also manage expectations and or know how else to support someone to get what they need? And the other one that leads into this is sometimes a constant pursuit of better can apply. You're, you're never good enough. So you need a bit of a balance there. So what do you Wow. Think? Yeah. That's a, that's a, I think you just, that question described humanity, right? <laughs> Potential expectations, disappointment, and then what are we capable of? So let's, let's dial it back a bit. So first of all, don't write yourselves off. You're humans, right? I will say we have more potential than we, when we can even imagine, but we also have to manage our expectations because, you know, Disappointment, our definition of disappointment is the gap that exists between our expectations and our experience. So we have to be realistic about what we're capable of. So knowing your limitations, absolutely, but don't sell yourself short. What are we saying we're limited in? Is it our capacity to feel or to care? Because we hear this, I gotta be honest, I hear lately, oh Steve, uh, you know, this person needs tough love and I, you know, I'm not a hugger and this isn't therapy. I gotta say, whoa, 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 wait a minute. If we're talking about being human centered, right? You don't have to be a hugger. But we have, to, we have to be honest about there often isn't uh, love in the tough part of the tough love, right? So, so what is it that we're saying we're limited by? Is it resources? Are our limitations in the, the clarity piece that we don't have the clarity that we need? But let's not sell ourselves short on our capability for connecting as humans and relating to each other and developing an environment of trust. So that's, that's what I wanted to say around the expectations. This is what I've been saying with my brothers and sisters in health all year long. Let's just, let's lower our expectations for a while. Let's not lower our standards or our values, but let's lower the expectations and be surprised every single day when they get exceeded. I hope that was helpful. Excellent, thanks, Steve. I know there was a lot rolled up in there. Uh, a couple of questions on this, uh, and I know we'll, we'll speak to it at the end, but uh, how do you recommend asking your team for the honest, candid feedback? One-on-ones, surveys, anonymous surveys, and there was a, a follow-up to that from someone else is what tools can we use to assist in effective and sustaining that connection? Yeah, and Chris is gonna speak to some of the tools. We've got some great ones. We built them for that reason. Our dream though is that we can walk down the hall and, and say, hey, and have a conversation. You know, even though we do surveys, our dream is that we don't sit behind a keyboard, the safety of a keyboard or an anonymous survey, but right now that's where we're at and that's okay. So I would say all of those are helpful. Right? I would start with a general announcement in a staff meeting right? to everybody. Let them roll their eyes, let them we've <laughs> if they need to. Right? We've got a ways to go, but say, I wanna get better at leadership. Those two messages, right? I value you and I value your efforts and I want you to succeed and I wanna be a better leader. Just as a general announcement to everybody. Right? But remember what I said, we've gotta got align our behavior with that message. So the second one is one-on-ones are great as well because it's safe. People, people don't have to save face and like, you know, jockey for certain kinds of reactions or whatever. It's just safe and say, hey, one-to-one. -one. The more we're consistent, right? And this is so important. What they need is action. That's what they need to see. People say, well, they won't believe us. So this is the thing I said earlier, it doesn't matter, Steve, scares me. The best antidote for that is belief and belief comes through evidence. So once they get evidence, and, and I'm gonna give an example, it's taking tough feedback and saying back to the person that gave it to you or back to the team, I heard you and this is what I'm doing about it. Once they see you integrating the feedback and acting differently and making those changes towards growth, they will start to believe. And that's when the difference starts to happen. So I hope that that's, I hope that that's helpful. It's a great question. Go slow, right? Go slow, connect with your heart. Right? And I want you to know, and I've, we've worked with thousands of leaders, the hardest part is asking. I can guarantee you, once you get over that anxiety and you hear a couple things that sting, it gets easier after that. So thank you for the question and thanks for being here. Okay, awesome, Steve. I will uh, let you know that there is a couple of people that made reference to the million dollar question in here. Oh. For those that, uh, so there are obviously some, uh, some core communication folks in here. Woo. Recognizing right. uh, someone from our past that is uh, quite active today, which is great. I love it. 
Um, one of the things um, that is, this is more of a comment that was made, but I think this is important is this reminder. Sometimes leaders think they are being clear and that they think they know and understand their impact, but they do not. And I just want maybe we can reinforce that point. So. Huge, huge. I just want to say um, we work and I, I get the, I have the privilege of working with some of the best leaders in the world, right? You've read about them, you know them. Okay. So we're already, we put, they're amazing by every, every standard and they have blind spots. We all have blind spots, right? From the, from the leader in the mailroom to the CEO of the publicly traded company, the intent impact gap is huge. It's one of the things why we're pursuing it, right? And so those, those blind spots can only be eliminated or light shone on them or information and feedback is if we work together to have the people that work with us. That's why we developed the tools. We developed the M3. We developed, and this is the great thing about the tools that we use as well, is we, I like making predictions and we're often wrong. We're often wrong. Even, even some of the best leaders that know their teams and connect often and we guess, okay, what is going to be the thing this month that the team is concerned about? It's not what we thought it was about. So we have to take the intent impact gap as real. And one of the things I said earlier that keeps me up at night is if we know all of this stuff, we did an article, we pulled it back, we're going to redo it, 500 million minus one, right? So out of all those hits that we get when we go to Google and we say, hey, give us a great leadership book or what's the best one to read, none of them are written by our, by our employees, right? So, so, so the feedback is critical and the intent impact gap is real. And that's why I think for 2022, if we can work on zapping that gap and closing that, that, that thing that exists to the extent possible, because it can never be totally closed. And that's what's going to keep us humble and pursuing feedback to get to better. Thank you. All right, Steve, a couple more questions here I want to try and get to. And one you can think on and maybe come back. And, uh, the, one is, can you recommend three books for improving oh. leadership oh. and communication? And the person that put this question out said, they'll let you recommend yours as a bonus. Oh, yeah. Thanks. So My come, mom will be, keep, keep, yeah. Keep that in the back of your mind, but I want, this is a great question. How do you take the first step in the roadmap to a more open and transparent culture change in an organization, both as a leader and as a follower? Can you ask that question again? I was stuck on the three the books. books. Yeah, sorry <laughs> to do that to you. Uh, how do you take the first step in the roadmap to a more open and transparent culture change in an organization, both as a leader and as a follower? What's the first step for leaders and followers to change the, the culture to a more- Great, great question. So great. Start with yourself, right? Start with yourself. Sit down with yourself and go, is this what I want? The most overlooked quality of a leader is willingness, right? And sometimes we don't want certain things. We're going to be honest with ourselves. Do I want this? Is this where I want to be? Do I want to surround yourself with great people, right? The one thing I'm going to say, the second thing, start with yourself, but focus on the relationships that you're responsible for. Because sometimes we work with some companies that are huge, the, the tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of people, right? It can be overwhelming, right? I work with a, a, an amazing um, COO who has uh, close to 10,000 people, but actually is only responsible for 20 direct reports. They're responsible for hundreds. So focus on the people that you're responsible for. for if you take better care of them, right? Because this is it. A system is as strong as its core. So if you can strengthen the core of your relationships with each person and the person in the next unit does that and the person in the next unit does that, and all we have to do is focus on five or six or 10 people, we start to see a system strengthen fast and hard. Those are the first two things I would say is start with yourself and then focus on the people that are closest to you first and get moving. All right, Steve, uh, great, great answer here. One last question before we just kind of do a quick summary to wrap up. What systems or processes need to be in place to promote effective leadership? Ooh, what systems? Uh, great leaders. <laughs> Biggest one, two things. And it's just a perspective. You've heard me say this before. I think we need to hire people who love humans as a starting point. Hmm. We should just hire people that love human beings, right? Second thing is we should ensure that we've hired based on values and competency is the second thing. Right? But let's not forget, it takes connection and clarity. So once we've got the people that can connect and love to connect, we give them the tools and the resources to provide the clarity that they need to get the people to where they need to go, to feel and do better at work. So that's, that's where I would say um, to put our efforts. We talk about fixing the gate, right? Who we let into the company and, and, and how we let them in. Right? And if we let in people that care about humans, have the values that we want, and we equip them with the resources they need, Everything else is child's play. And here come my three, three, three books. Uh, number one, Viktor Frankl's Man's Search for Meaning. 
Number two, a theory greater than love. I can't remember uh, right now who, uh, who wrote it. And the third one, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say my own response of leadership by DeGroote, <laughs> right? right. Uh, but anyway, as I said, the reason why I'm hesitant about books and stuff is because the next time a leader wants to grab a book or go to a course other than Brivia, of course, <laughs> I think they should go to their team members first and say, teach me what you know about leadership. Teach me what I need to know. I need to do to be a better leader and that will be better than any book or any seminar that you could possibly pay for. So thank you very much, Chris. I'm going to pass it over to you. Awesome. Thank you everybody. Thank Chris has got some information. Anything else, Chris? No, I, that was great, Steve. We'll, we'll put those book recommendations in our follow-up email to yeah. make sure people were scrambling and, and that idea about what systems or processes or place should be a place measure leadership. Uh, and I think that's one, if you want to just advance the slide, Steve, thank oh. you everyone for joining us. That would be great. That, that was, it was fantastic. Thank you for your questions. We didn't get through all of them, but stay in contact with us because we'd love to hear from you. Join us on LinkedIn. Steve is all over. Um, 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 it's just escaped me now. The, right, Steve, your social media. Clubhouse. Clubhouse, thank <laughs> Club. you. I was going to say something different. But join us next month where we're actually going to use, there's a lot of questions about how do we ask these questions, including some of the difficult ones. Well, we're going to be doing a solution spotlight on that and spe specifically on how to measure and improve leadership within your organization. So we're going to be talking specifically about that on February 17th. We'll send out uh, sign up information. And on March 17th, we're actually going to have a special guest join us from healthcare, someone that's leading a hospital through the pandemic and share their experience in applying some of these tools and their own approach to, uh, to, a, to a leadership uh, through the pandemic. So thank you again. We'll send a follow up out. Uh, one of our, our, our business partners, Steve Smith, will continue to reach out to you guys to hear, hear your thoughts on what you want to hear more about. Uh, and we'll send that re the recording out to you. Um, uh, we'll get that out to you guys tomorrow. So thanks again for joining us and have a great day.